Today's lesson is called Mongooses, Snake Killers of the Animal Kingdom. Hello everyone, my name is Jeff. My name is Roger. Today we're going to talk about the mongoose, which is kind of a mammal that is common in Africa and Asia. Mongoose, you probably heard about it, especially when they talk about the cobra. Sometimes mongooses will fight a cobra, or a mongoose and a cobra will have a fight. But、uh, yeah, it's kind of weird because you know cobras are poisonous snakes, but still. The mongooses usually win, which is true. They usually do win. It's kind of amazing. Yeah, cobras are big, fast, venomous snakes that are extremely scary. Sometimes they even spit their venom at people and stuff like that. They're very, very scary. They can kill you very easily. But somehow or another, mongooses are able to defeat cobras. How about that? They're definitely the snake killers. Of the animal kingdom. Anyways, let's go ahead and learn some more about mongooses. We'll start right after this. Mongooses, snake killers of the animal kingdom. The story of Ricky Tikki Tavi, written by Rudyard Kipling and based on an Indian folk tale, features one of the fiercest killers in the animal kingdom, the mongoose. The main character is a loyal pet mongoose. Who saves his family from death at the hands of a pair of cobras? For most people, this story is their first and only exposure to these slender-bodied, bushy-tailed, and highly curious animals. So there is much that people don't understand about them. 大家好，第一部分我们看到单字 folk tale 这个字是名词，指民间故事。例如。Many children's songs were inspired by traditional folk tale. 许多儿歌的灵感是来自于传统民间故事。Okay, so today we're talking about mongooses, snake killers of the animal kingdom. I guess if you don't like snakes. You should call a mongoose in to do the dirty work for you. Now, here in the first paragraph, it says the story of Ricky Tikki Tavi, written by Rudyard Kipling and based on an Indian folk tale, features one of the fiercest killers in the animal kingdom. The mongoose. Now Kipling wrote a lot of things. He's a British novelist, and、uh, he's、uh, known for the Jungle Book. I believe Ricky Tikki Tavi is actually a story from the Jungle Book. I think Disney made it into a movie many years ago. But、uh, one of those stories from the Jungle Book is Ricky Tikki Tavi. And that itself was based on an Indian folk tale. So, of course, every country has its own folk tales. There are plenty of folk tales here in Taiwan, but India has lots of them as well. And I guess there's some kind of folk tale from India about a mongoose. And so Kipling got that idea from the Indian folk tale and wrote Ricky Tikki Tavi. Yes, it says here this story features one of the fiercest killers in the animal kingdom. The mongoose, yeah, Ricky Tikki Tavi here. This is the story of Ricky Tikki Tavi, and it has in it, or it features, a fierce killer. Yeah, fiercest is the superlative term that is related to the adjective fierce, fierce, fiercer, fiercest. By the way, if you are fierce, you're very aggressive and wild, and probably willing to attack at the drop of a hat. Yep, you might need to be fierce in business if you want to make a lot of money. But here, this mongoose is the fiercest killer in the animal kingdom, and、uh, we all know why. So, going on here, it says the main character is a loyal pet mongoose who saves his family from death at the hands of a pair of cobras. That's what the story Ricky Tikki Tavi is all about. The main character is an animal, a mongoose. It's actually a pet mongoose. Somebody has. Has this animal as a pet in their home? Most people have cats or dogs as pets, but here they have a mongoose as a pet, and this pet is loyal to its masters. It's loyal to its family. If you're loyal, you stand up for somebody, and you're always there through thick and thin, rain or shine. You're there, standing by that person's side. You will never betray them. There you go. Earlier, you mentioned. 
dogs and cats. They make for great pets. Apparently, so do mongooses, although I've never seen a mongoose being used as a pet, or I've never seen a pet mongoose before, I should say. But here, they've got a loyal pet mongoose. What a cool story. Anyways, this pet mongoose was awesome. Apparently, it saved his family from death at the hands of a pair of cobras, i.e. this family was threatened by these cobras, and this loyal pet mongoose stepped in and saved the day. Yep, at the hands of, well, that means somebody was responsible, I could say. Alexander Hamilton was killed at the hands of Aaron Burr in a duel many years ago. But in any case here, the cobras are coming to kill the family, but the mongoose saves them from death. So that's the phrase here, to save someone from something. The other day, I ran into my friend John in the restaurant. He was eating by himself. I said, hey, John, do you mind if I join you? And he said, no, not at all. You saved me from dining alone. In other words, now I don't have to dine by myself. You can be my company here. So yes, indeed, this is a loyal mongoose who saved his family from death. From death at the hands of two cobras. There what you, a mongoose. There you go. This family wasn't threatened by one, but two cobras. And this guy, this pet mongoose, stepped in and saved the day. Yay. Anyways, more on mongooses for most people. This story is their first and only exposure to these slender-bodied, bushy-tailed, and highly curious animals, so there is much that people don't understand about them. So I get the feeling that when we read on after this break, we're going to start to learn some fun facts about the mongoose. How exciting. All right, folks, with that, it is time for us to take a short break, but don't go away. We'll be back soon. For instance, many believe a mongoose's superpower is being immune to snake venom, after all, in the Kipling story, the mongoose survives a visit to a cobra's den. The reality is that while mongooses can tolerate quite a lot of snake venom, they will die if they sustain enough bites. Though his classmates frequently made fun of him, Sean was immune to their teasing. 虽然 Sean 的同学经常开他玩笑，他却不受他们的嘲笑影响。接下来我们看到一个单字 venom， 这个字是名词，指蛇、蜘蛛等的毒液。举例来说 ，This species of mongoose is immune to snake venom. 这种萌类动物对蛇毒免疫。再来，我们看到一个单字 den， 这个字是名词。指巢穴、兽穴，例如 ，The bears are asleep in their den. 熊在他们的巢穴里睡着了。另外，这个字除了上面的意思，还可以指小巧舒适的私室或书房，像是 My dad likes to relax in his den with a glass of wine. 我父亲喜欢在他的小房间里喝着红酒放松。接着，我们看到动词 sustain， 指遭受、经历、使持续。我们可以说。The car sustained serious damage in the accident. 那辆车在意外事故中受到严重损坏。或是 The opera singer sustained her final note for over twenty seconds. 那位歌剧演唱家的尾音延续了超过二十秒。Indeed. Now, where we left off at the end of the first part, we were saying that there is much that people don't understand about mongooses. So let's give you an example of something that people don't understand about mongooses. For instance, or for example, many believe a mongoose's superpower is being immune to snake venom. Yes, I believe that as well. They somehow are immune to snake venom. If you're immune to something, that means your body has defenses, and so you cannot catch that disease or be killed by that thing. You might be immune to certain diseases because you had that disease before, and your body has built up antibodies to fight that disease in the future. So you are immune to that disease. Yeah, like when I was growing up, I didn't get chickenpox. 
kids at school were getting chicken pox. My brothers and sisters were getting chicken pox. I didn't get it because I'm naturally immune to chicken pox. That's a fun fact. That's true. I can't get chicken pox. I don't know how I got lucky that way, but I did. Like I said, I'm naturally immune to chicken pox. Now, are mongooses really immune to snake venom? Apparently not. They can be affected by the snake venom, but before they are affected, they can tolerate quite a lot of this venom. By the way, venom, okay, that's the nasty, poisonous, toxic stuff that comes out of a snake's fangs. Yeah, other animals do produce venom, but here when we're talking about venom, we're talking about that nasty stuff that will kill you that comes from that cobra, let's say. Right, venom, it's usually from an animal. So you could also describe snakes or other animals as being venomous or poisonous. Both are correct. Although, again, you cannot describe a snake as being toxic. Perhaps the venom itself is toxic, but the snake is not toxic. It's the venom that's poisonous. So watch out for that. But in any case here, a lot of people think that, that uh, mongooses are immune to the snake venom. Now, after all, in the Kipling story, the mongoose survives a visit to a cobra's den. A den, I guess, is where cobras live. It's like a small hole in the ground or something like that. You might have a den in your house, too. Some people have those. It's kind of like a library or a lounge or something like that. Uh, we did not have a den in my house when I was a kid. It's kind of rare, actually, but in this particular case, the den is referring to the cobra's home. And the reality is that while mongooses can tolerate quite a lot of snake venom, they will die if they sustain enough bites. So here we've got the verb to tolerate. That just means to basically allow something to happen or be able to withstand something. So there you go. They are not immune to snake venom. If they were immune to snake venom, snake venom wouldn't affect them at all. But here's the situation. They can take a lot of this venom. They can tolerate a lot of it. But if they get enough bites, they will die. So there you go. They can take a lot of this venom on and not really be affected by it. But in the end, they can be killed by venom. How about that? Yes, here, if you sustain something, you suffer those things or you get those things. So here, if they sustain enough bites, if they get bitten enough by a cobra, let's say, they will, in fact, die because, yes, mongooses are not immune to snake venom. Okay, let's move on now to the third and final portion of our article and continue talking about mongooses. Luckily, mongooses have a fighting strategy that puts them mostly out of the reach of a snake strike. A mongoose will circle around the snake, biting its tail and causing it to repeatedly strike in defense. Eventually, the snake wearies, a situation that gives the mongoose a chance to deliver a final fatal blow to the back of the snake's head. In this way, mongooses win around 80% of their fights with snakes, even against the most dangerous kinds. Out of the reach of 加名词表示超出点点点伸手可及的距离。举例来说 ，lighters should be kept out of the reach of children. 打火机应该放在小孩拿不到的地方。再来，我们看到动词 weary 指变得厌倦、疲劳、使疲倦。例如 ，listening to her children argue all day wearied the mother, so all she wanted to do was sleep. 因为整天听到他孩子在争吵，让妈妈感到很厌倦，所以他唯一想做的就只有睡觉。另外，这个字也可以是形容词，指疲倦的、疲劳的。像是 Brenda was weary after her long day of work. 漫长的一天工作下来 ，Brenda 累坏了。最后，我们看到一个单字 fatal， 这个字是形容词，指致命的、灾难性的。我们可以说 Traffic was stopped because of a fatal car crash. 交通因一起致命车祸而停滞。另外，补充一个同义词 ，deadly, d e a d l y, deadly， 指致命的、致死的。例如 ，Taiwan is home to many deadly snakes. 台湾是许多种致命毒蛇的栖息地。All right. So, are mongooses immune to snake venom? No, if they get bitten, 
they will feel it. It, it might not affect them as, as much as it might affect a human being, let's say, or another type of animal. But yes, this venom after a while, if they do sustain enough bites, they will die from this venom. They are not immune to snake venom. Luckily though, mongooses have a fighting strategy that puts them mostly out of reach of a snake's strike. So there you go. Mongooses, they have a fighting strategy, a way of fighting that puts them out of harm's way, okay? If they don't get bitten, they can't die from snake venom. That's the idea here. They have this strategy, this way of fighting that puts them out of reach or out of the range of that snake's strike. So the reach of just refers to how far the snake can jump at the mongoose. Usually it's not far enough, so the mongoose is far away, or at least just far away enough so the snake cannot bite him. So indeed, they're out of reach of the snake's strike. Strike. You could put a the there, or you could uh, take the the out. They're both okay. Like if you have medicine at home, you should keep it out of reach of children. Anyways, more on the mongoose. A mongoose will circle around the snake, biting its tail and causing it to repeatedly strike in defense. And I guess over time, the snake tires itself out and the mongoose can move in for the kill. That's right. That's its strategy to keep biting it from behind to bite the snake's tail. And of course, the snake wants to defend itself repeatedly over and over. It tries to strike back and of course, it's out of reach, or at least the mongoose is out of reach of the snake. So eventually, the snake gets tired. That's what weary here means. Weary is usually used as an adjective. Oh, I feel weary from so much studying. But here, weary is being used as a verb. It just means to get tired. So after a long time, eventually, the snake gets tired. And that gives the mongoose a chance to deliver a fatal blow, to go in for the kill. A fatal blow. Fatal means it causes death. So there you go. It just doesn't bite the tail the entire time. When it goes in for that final fatal blow, the blow, the hit, the bite that kills the snake, it actually bites the back of the snake's head, or at least it hits the back of the snake's head there, and that kills it. Okay, that's it. That's the end of the fight. That's the final fatal blow. Anyways, in this way, mongooses win around 80% of their fights with snakes, even against the most dangerous kind. So there you go, four out of five times, or around 80% okay, of times when a mongoose decides to fight a snake, it's going to win. How about that? That's a pretty high percentage. All right, folks, with that, it's time for us to say goodbye for now, but don't worry, don't fret, the Chinese teacher is on her way. Slender bodied and bushy tailed. Bushy-tailed这两个复合形容词，那他们都是用形容词连字号再加上名词加ed而组成的。好，那我们来看一下这个bushy-tailed，其中这个bushy它是用来形容脓蜜的、茂密的，像毛发或是毛皮它是脓
two-sided 双面的 one-eyed 独眼的。好，那很多人对猫鼬这种动物不太了解，有些人是透过一个印度的民间故事才对他们第一次接触。课文第二部分就有说到，像很多人啊，都认为猫鼬的超强能力是在于不受蛇毒影响。这边有用到一个字叫 venom， 它是指毒液，像蛇啊、蜘蛛等等的毒液。那它的形容词是在字尾加上 o u s 变成 venomous 来形容有毒的、分泌毒液的。那同学们应该也有学过 poison 是毒。或是毒药，在后面加 o u s 变成 poisonous， 这个形容词也是形容有毒的、引起中毒的。那我们就试着来区分一下 venomous 和 poisonous 的差异。venomous 通常是用来形容会蜇人啊、咬人，并且注入毒液的那种生物。他们可能会用毒刺啊，或者是毒牙所产生的毒液来注入其他的生物。好，那么 poisonous 通常是用来形容这个食物或者是其他东西呢，接触之后会中毒的生物或是物品。好。像有一些生物，它可能整个生物体都是有毒素的，你一旦吃下去或是碰到它们，就可能造成伤害。所以，我们综合刚刚讲的，要形容毒蛇或毒蜘蛛，我们会用 a venomous snake 或是 a venomous spider 来表达。那么，像毒香菇，你可能吃下去或碰到会有毒这种，我们是用 poisonous mushroom。还有毒气呢，我们是用 poisonous gas 来表达。好，希望这样帮助同学们理解。以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾这些单。Fierce. Our neighbors have a fierce dog that guards their house. Loyal. Jim has been a loyal worker in the factory for more than thirty years. Tolerate. The teacher does not tolerate students using mobile phones in class. Sustain. The victim sustained multiple blows from his attacker before police arrived. Weary. Francis's dad always tells him that doubt wearies the mind. Fatal. The runner suffered a fatal heart attack while participating in a marathon. Okay, everyone. With that, today's article is now complete. But as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See you, See you next, next time. time.